Remember back in high school or elementary school, I suppose, where you saw equations like this, 3x equal to 7. These are just numbers, right? This multiplication of numbers and x is some variable. We're going to figure out what is that variable going to be. And then the way that we might solve a problem like this, you might just be able to glance at it and be like, come on, Trevor, it's 7 thirds. But, but the sort of rigorous way to go about it was to say, well, look, I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 third. And then my threes are going to cancel. And what I'm going to be left with is just an x on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, I'm left with 7 thirds. And therefore, I can get that, yes, 7 thirds is my answer to this equation. Now, I want you to think about the relationship between 3 and 1 third. Because there's something we refer to as being multiplicative inverses. 3 and a third, they sort of cancel and become the number 1. And then if you can cancel what you have in front of the x, this is sort of what we think of as isolating the x, and then whatever you have left over on the other side, that's going to be your answer. I also want you to note that the multiplicative inverse trick works pretty well for a large set of numbers, but it doesn't work well for anything like this, 0x equal to 7. The reason why I can't do the same trick for that kind of equation is that I can't, I can't have a multiplicative inverse to 0. There's not some other number where 0 times that other number is equal to 1, the way 3 times 1 third was equal to 1. Okay, so that's our intuition from numbers. Now let's look at the same idea for, for matrices. And what we want to do for matrices is say, if I have some particular matrix A, can I find its multiplicative inverse? Can I find some other matrix so that A times this inverse is equal to the analog of 1? Well, to do this, I need to first of all think about what's the analog of 1 in matrices. And I think it's the thing that we've seen previously, the identity matrix. The identity matrix has the 1s all the way along the main diagonal and the zeros everywhere else. That matrix is an identity in the sense that the identity matrix times anything is just the anything. All right. So I think that sets us up for us to be able to write down our definition. And here it is. I am going to claim that my matrix is invertible, or it has a multiplicative inverse. If, when I have my A, I can find some other matrix, and I give it the name A inverse, it turns out that there can only be one of them. I have an A and an A inverse, and when I multiply them together, I get the identity matrix, which I think of as my analog of 1. So this is kind of like taking 3 and 1 third equal to 1, but it's, it's A and the inverse of A, and they multiply together to get the identity matrix. And then just in the same way where I take 3 and 1 third, or I could rearrange it, and I could take 1 third and 3, I'm going to have the same property down here. So this is why I write it as A times A inverse is A inverse times A is equal to the identity matrix. That's my property. All right, lovely. Now, why do I care about this? I care about it for the same reason that I cared about having a multiplicative inverse for equations just of numbers. So I want you to imagine that my goal, as it so often is in linear algebra, is to solve some ax equal to, and I can give a little bit of space here, b. That's our standard thing that we try to do in linear algebra. We have some system of equations. We try to figure out, well, what are the solutions? What are the x values to it? So now let me imagine that my matrix A is one of the nice ones. It's not like the, the zero matrix, for instance. We've seen that zero was a problem for numbers. In other words, I want to suppose that A is invertible, and it isn't always. And if I suppose that it's invertible, then let me go and multiply both sides by its inverse as I did before. We know that a inverse times A is just going to be the identity matrix. That's our just definition. So it's IX is equal to A inverse all multiplied by this B vector. And then the identity matrix is the one that doesn't transform anything, right? I times X is just going to be the exact same thing as X. And now I have a solution to AX equal to B. My, my vector x is just a inverse times b. So I want you to note two facts that have come out of this. 
The first is this. We just proved a theorem. The theorem says that if I have an invertible matrix A, then every single system AX equal to B, doesn't matter what the B is at all, is completely solvable. I can tell you what it is. X is equal to this A inverse times B. And in fact, that tells me that there's only a unique solution to it because every X has to obey that and A inverse times B is just some vector. So in other words, if I have an invertible matrix, I get the good situation. Every single system is solvable with a unique solution. This is going to be incredibly important for us. We are going to really, really, really like systems where the matrix A is invertible because this is the, the sort of ideal situation. Yeah, you can solve it and that you can solve it in only one way. There isn't all these sort of infinite families of different solutions you have to deal with. There is one unique solution. That's going to be a really good situation for us. I should also point out that if I have this, finding these solutions is super easy because matrix multiplication times a vector, like there's some computational work there, but it's pretty easy. And if you figured out what that A inverse is, doesn't matter what the B is, any B that you give me, it's pretty quick to go and write down the solution. So not only have I solved the system, but I've solved it really easily that, that it, for any B, it only takes me just like a few seconds to do that multiplication, and then I've got the answer. Finally, I want to note that while I haven't proven it, this theorem is if and only if. That is, suppose you have a matrix where every single system AX equal to B is going to have a unique solution then you will get that the matrix is invertible. So in other words, we have equivalent properties here. Every possible system having a unique solution and A being invertible, one implies the other and the other implies the first one. So this is gonna be a really important theme of ours going forward.